the works for their salvation. Instead, it's the Holy Spirit who brings dead souls and brings them to life through the proclamation of Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins. The Holy Spirit keeps those souls alive through that same proclamation that Christ is crucified, dead, buried, but now it is alive, has risen. And that that Savior leads the Christian, carries the Christian, follows the Christian. And so the Holy Spirit allows us to find comfort and confidence in Christ. Good works are simply the result, the corresponding fruit to what we have already been given. The Holy Spirit inspired Isaiah to write, We have all become like one who is unclean. All our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf. Our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. So even the best thing that you have ever done for someone, the best thing that I've ever done for someone, it's still not good enough. It's still not righteous. All of our righteous deeds are still sinful before God. But Jesus has redeemed our deeds with his suffering and death on the cross. It is Christ on the cross and nothing else and no one else that makes our deeds righteous. And those who have had their good deeds sanctified by Jesus focus on Jesus and not on their works. They're going to notice their good works about as closely as they can watch their fingernails grow. Jesus did warn us and said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. Really is one of the saddest statements in the Sermon on the Mount. Trading away eternal joy for some temporary praise by people. All of you here today, and especially Addison and Grace and Adam, you are pleasing to God, but not because of what you do or don't do. You are pleasing to God because of what Jesus did for you. Jesus lived a life that met God's perfect standard. He died a death that paid your sin, and the rest of you too. He paid all of our sin in full. And he rose from the dead as a sign that that sin was completely taken care of. And so we get to be among those who pray that prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. And we look forward to that day. We take comfort in the promise of Jesus. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And we can look forward to that day in joyful expectation when that loud voice from the throne will say, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with people. He will dwell with them and be their God, and they will be his people. Now, while we wait for that day, you will continue to produce good works. And those works are going to do you absolutely no good in the eyes of God, but they will be a blessing to those around you. God accomplishes his will in this world through our works. And so continue to confess your sins, even those righteous deeds that are like polluted garments. But as you confess, also know that you are forgiven in Christ. And so receive that forgiveness often. Live for those around you in serving them and shining Jesus' light and love. And don't waste time trying to measure up your good works to others because you don't need them. 
you are already an heir to the kingdom of God that was made for you before the foundation of the world. And so we all rejoice in this house on this day that God wants to dwell with us. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we are so incredibly thankful to you for the faith that you have worked in all of our lives. And we especially thank you for the work your Holy Spirit has done in the hearts and minds of Grace and Addison and Adam. We thank you, God, for these young people and pray that they would continue to grow in you. May we continue to grow in our own faith and lives as we seek to be built up together with you as our center. Now things are a little bit different this year, in case you hadn't heard, we're in something called a pandemic. And so rather than having the compromands come forward and stand together, we are going to have them simply stand now in your place and turn in the hymnal uh, to page 272. And please stand. Oh, sorry, just the three compromise. The rest of you get to chill. You could just send them your love and well wishes as you're sitting. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Son, Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Just as a quick side note, that's why Pastor Brian makes you do your speeches in front of everyone. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, yes I, I believe in God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Sorry. Normally, you guys would just say that together. I'm going to say it with you because it's also hard for you to hear each other, and that way we'll be more together. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, yes I believe in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? I do. Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism, to be faithful and true. I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? I do, by the grace of God. 
do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do, by the grace of God. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, we will not be having you kneel, but I simply will give you the blessing and we will go in alphabetical order. And so grace, faith, violent hintica, the almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The scripture passage that I've chosen for you is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Addison Ella Kaukinen, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. The scripture passage that I've chosen for you, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will straighten your paths. Adam, Daniel, Michaels, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. For your verse, I have chosen 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness and bringing these, your Son and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, in the waters of holy baptism you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with the faith that ever clings to their Savior, deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrines, that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor and to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
May God's peace be with you. Amen. You may, actually, you can stay standing and we'll ask everyone else in the congregation to please stand as we now continue with our prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the whole Christian community around the world that as people united in faith we may witness to the good news that is ours in Christ Jesus. Together we say, Amen and Amen. We pray for all nations of the earth that in those places where strife and discord rule there may be peace. And we pray for our own nation that it may seek to bring that which is good and God-pleasing about in every global situation. Together we say, Amen and Amen. We pray for all those who labor in the fields of the Lord, that the Good Shepherd would lead them to pleasant pastures and give them joy in their callings. And we pray that the God of all grace would continue to raise up men and women to serve in vocations of service in the church. Together we say, Amen, amen and Amen. We pray for our lives and for the situations in which we are placed day by day, at home, in the workplace, in schools, or wherever our paths lead us, that we may be peacemakers and peace bringers, carrying out the command to love one another as our Lord has loved us. Together we say, Amen and Amen. We pray for Grace, Addison, and Adam as they have professed their faith and will receive the Lord's body and blood for the first time. Continue to provide for all of their needs of body and soul. Together we say, Amen and Amen. We pray for the special needs of this day, including health and family concerns, joys and sorrows, and all that is on our hearts. We remember especially the Salmi and Miller families. Wrap them in the consolation of your love, and promise of eternal life. Together we say, Amen, amen and amen. amen. With gratitude we remember all those who have completed their earthly journeys in faith, whose witness remains to bless and inspire us. May we with confidence follow in their footsteps and be led by the Holy Spirit. Together we say, Amen, amen and amen. amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with the Spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. 
This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. We speak these words together. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Amen. Amen.